Yeah, I'm not afraid of cameras anymore. <laughs> 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 yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Doing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast Drupal Technology, Community, and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast Drupal Technology, Community, and Business. module for that there of course there is we mm -hmm. are at drupal camp london 2015 uh it's gotten off to a great start there was a large-scale drupal meeting on thursday a cxo day on friday and now it's saturday and it's open for the community there's been a great bunch of sessions there's a ton of sprinting going on downstairs and I had the good fortune to run into two of my colleagues from Acquia from what I consider the best team in the whole company, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. What do you guys call yourselves? Supporto. Right. The client advisory team is how we sell you. But um, so picture the Sparta poster and then a lot of nerds going, Supporta! <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. Right. So that, that's what we do. Daniel Blomqvist from Sweden. Yes, from Sweden. And Henk Belt from Holland. Yes, great. Am I supposed to say the Netherlands in English or Holland? No, most of the folks say the Netherlands. Okay. Yeah. On the other hand, I learned that Holland just means yes. the hollow land, which, you know, because so much of it is technically under, the, under sea level, right? Yes, the left part of the Netherlands is called Holland. That's correct. Huh. Yes. Okay. It's very easy. Oh, All right. Yeah. If you don't take anything else away from this podcast, we got some geography in today. Yes, good. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yay, yay. Learn stuff. So, Drupal. What's your first Drupal memory, Hank? My first, first Drupal memory is uh, like four, five years ago, I think. I was at a company, uh, they had a website and was built in another system and I had to uh, create a multi-site environment and I evaluated multiple open source systems and closed source systems and Drupal came out as best. So that's when I started learning Drupal also. And my first, yeah, I started using uh, domain access from uh, day one. Great module. Yes. Thank you, Ken Rickard, right? Yes, I met him. I met him once, yes. Shout out Agent Rickard. And so you'd consider your first Drupal member to be, to be a positive one? Yes, definitely. Yeah, a, a steep learning curve, but uh, once you had the first few, uh, the first learning curve, it's just awesome. Okay. So what made, you, on, it's great. what made you stick with Drupal? Um, yeah, the diversity uh, of, of solutions you can build in Drupal. Uh, not just a website, but a complete internet. Whatever you like online, you can build, I think, in Drupal. And... Um, uh, for everything you think you need, for everything there's almost a module. And what do you like most about being part of the Drupal community? Uh, wow, you know, meeting all, all different kinds of folks, like you yourself, for instance, I believe we met, you know, as I, as I first, first approached Acquia or vice versa, I don't remember. Um, I mean, how many of us are there here today? Nearly 500. I reckon, and this is a Drupal camp, which right. is quite impressive. And we have folks from Sweden, Holland. I met other folks that I've met at Drupal meetups back home in Stockholm. So it's quite amazing. Acquia at this point is about, so we're at the end of February 2015. Mm -hmm. Acquia is about 600 employees. And we've got a main office in Boston. We've got a big office in Portland. Uh, we've got a big office in Reading outside of London, and then we have uh, people in Sweden, people in Holland, people in Germany, people in Australia, people in uh, the Middle East, people in France, France Siberia. Yeah. The client advisory team, supporter, mm -hmm. um, I've noticed every time I have anything to do with your team, there's an incredible esprit de corps between you. There's an incredible feeling of solidarity and I get the impression that you really have each other's backs and you're really, really there for each other. Uh, I also get the impression that um, if somebody wants to really learn 
how Drupal works, that it's an incredible learning resource. Just being on that team, there's so much experience and, and, and so much resource there for you, right? But how do you get to having such a team feeling when you're sitting, uh, you know, several thousand kilometers that way and you're down in Holland and then, you know, the next guy is in Indiana yeah. or whoever's awake? How does that work? For instance, every morning we have our uh, wake-up call with the Australians. We do it every morning together. Yep. And, um, but, yeah, I think the basics, because we're such a tight team, is we're problem solvers. And I really believe if you have to solve problems, you have to rely on each other. Totally. And I mean, <clears throat> even at the beginning, uh, you know, starting at, at Arquia, we do a quite solid onboarding as well. I mean, just, just, uh, just uh, the day after tomorrow on Monday, I will be meeting up with our newest addition, Sophie Gras, from, from France. I believe she will be working as a remote as well. Yes. You know, she will be giving a solid week uh, in Reading meeting us you know uh, at the same time she will meet up with uh, amy q from from the training team of the uh, support uh, every afternoon uh, together with me as well and they hang out and that i do believe is the other part the hangouts uh, <laughs> we we begin doing that what a year ago now right yeah you know yeah, i think so yeah yeah we do daily hangouts i i try to keep a hangout open at all the time actually with very nice naming conventions. The Monday Warriors, <laughs> Tuesday Thunders, Wednesday Wreckers, Thursday Thor Hammers, and Friday Vikings. <laughs> you know, you, 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 need to, you need to sort of put a little edge on everything you do working as a remote. You need to keep it fun. <laughs> so one of the ways that I can succeed as a remote employee is that my I work very hard to define my goals with my manager as as deliverables mm -hmm, yeah. as concrete um, specified things ahead of time so that we have a definition of success um, and also then it doesn't matter when I do it no. right or or not even not even where I do it if, if if things come as I've promised them then then everything's okay how do you set goals and and define success on the client advisory team um, you know with this mix of locals and remotes yeah so I mean it, it's we have a few very simple tools called shifts. You know, we have shifts, and they start uh, for us. I do believe at st officially start at nine. Yeah, our times on at nine, yeah, and then during the day till uh, three in the afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. And four, then Boston four. picks up. And then Boston yeah, yeah, at our, nine o'clock their, their time. time, and it's our time three yeah. o'clock in the afternoon. And there is also an overlap. So I mean, our our mm -hmm. friends here in Reading, uh, <coughs> they are obviously in our. Uh, what, what is it? Earlier. Earlier than we are. So they have a few more hours to spare. So there's a very nice overlapping for that as well. Um, also working in the Supporta team, we have some pretty clear metrics, you know, how many tickets do you handle, CSATs and so forth. And what's a CSAT? Yeah, customer satisfaction. Oh, customer satisfaction statistics? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something like that? Yeah, something like that, you know. Just like you would find when you you know enter a store, or rather when you leave the store, you know how happy were you? You know, smiling thumbs, face, so you a thumbs up, face. a thumbs up from a customer, or a thumbs down can happen also. The customer isn't doesn't agree, yeah. but normally we only get a thumbs up. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. very nice comments as well. But uh, no, to be serious on that, no, we um, we have pretty set numbers. You know, yeah. it's it's quite easy to see when someone delivers and not and honestly I haven't seen anyone not deliver since, no. since I joined uh, I think we are quite how do you take into account that some problems are harder than other problems right what if what if you do five super easy tickets mm -hmm. and he gets one hard ticket how does that yeah, balance yeah. out we said it, it happens oh yeah, yeah it, it can happen if you're on a very difficult ticket then you don't have then it could take half your day and then a, a colleague steps in and says, well, I have done a little more tickets, but it's, it's yeah. never a problem. I've never experienced it as a problem. Yeah, and apart from that, we, we always have the weekly one-to-ones with our manager as well. Yeah. So our manager will be very well updated on you know, what's going on, what's taking time. Uh, within the team, we work pretty good with you know, uh, 
support leadership escalations when needed, you know, tickets in our internal system mm -hmm. uh, to track, keep track of things. So we have a, you know, good systems to, yeah. to keep folks in the loop of what's going on and who's owning what. You said that the team feeling mm -hmm. in part comes from being problem solvers united in problem solving. I think so, yeah. But how do you build trust and, and maintain this relationship when you're so far apart from each other? What are the technical things that help your team work together, cooperate, and, and feel like a team when you're so far apart from each other? What are some of the tricks and, and, and technologies, specific kind of things that you do? We have, uh, for, for one, uh, we have chat open all day. If there is a question, we have a group chat uh, or channel where you can post a question or uh, there's a whole day, everything, we discuss things with each other. And we have our hangouts. Uh, if there's a problem, if there's a question, whatever, we can start a hangout and discuss it with each other. I think we're in touch all day. Yeah, we are in touch all day. Yeah, uh, every with the whole team. Yeah, yeah. Every afternoon we do the uh, Good Morning East Coast Hangout call. Oh, so wait a minute. You have a Good Morning Australia yeah. where they hand things off. Yeah, correct. And then six hours later you have the Good Morning Boston. Oh, yes. And there's another handoff. Okay. Is there is there a third one somewhere between Boston and Australia, maybe? Uh, no, I believe there is a handoff between Boston and Portland. Okay. Yeah. Should, right. Yeah, and then Portland and Australia. So you know, we we fly all over the world. <laughs> so it comes down to communicating a lot. Oh, yes. All the time. Oh Definitely. yes. And the principle, like day to day, um, quickest easiest, is the Jabber server. Then yeah. the, the 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 text chat. Yeah. Yeah. So and how many people would come on your your hangout if you you have that open most days? Yeah, I have it open most days. It's pretty free for anyone to join in the team, you know. I think we will be two or three on yeah, it. Richie now, Richie is with us now for three months. Yeah, yeah. And Richie most of the time joins because when he has a question, you can pop in the question anytime. Yeah. Right. And uh, that sometimes works better than chat. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I mean, being a remote yourself, you, you will probably probably also find the written word to be somewhat hard to determine you know mm -hmm. it's hard seeing uh, nuances in we have to be very careful very careful you know weighing our words wordsmithing and um, that's why i prefer to hang out you know to discuss a problem or to ask a more direct question around something right um, so when i moved from the technical side of acquia to the marketing team, um, I learned some different communication patterns. Open source people, we love writing. We love long threads of discussing everything and all the edge cases. And the business side of the house kind of hates that. Um, but I learned if there's anything complex, anything that you think could be a problem, get on the phone. Five minutes on the phone or on video chat can often save you hours of email Definitely. and save you a lot of misunderstandings. Yeah, I do. We do that also with uh, if you encounter a problem and you can't fix it straight away, that happens. Uh, we can always reach out to the tier twos, to Niels or to Drew, and uh, you most of the time is hey, come on, let's do a quick hangout. It's better than doing a long chat or right. Oh yes, oh yes, and I think anyone that works with. Where the customer support of any sort also knows that a five minute call from time to time with a customer can take away a lot of pain and a lot of stress. Okay, that's a great tip. Yeah, totally. And yeah, just, just like you said, that goes for the teammates as well, you know. Um, and we do these events as well. Now we're here at Drupal Camp London, combining that with our what is it quarterly on site? Yep. Oh, so so the so the EMEA team, the European team, yep. you see each other face to face at least four times a year. Try to ish. ish. You know, ish. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I firmly believe in in building face to face relationships. It helps the remote working um, enormously, and the best example of that is actually the Drupal community. Oh yes. You know, the community events came about so that so that when you're off in your basement 
writing code, um, you know there's a person behind the, the, the issue queue. Right, and and you know what they, you know. You might even know their relationship status that they've got little kids that they're not getting so much sleep. You know, you can forgive a lot more, and you have a lot more empathy when you really know the. You have to remember that you're dealing with a person, right? Oh yeah. And then when you know that, when you have actual when a relationship with them, I think that that's got to help. So, so let's try and sum up what makes uh, Acquia client advisor supporter a team um, on the technical. Like things that tips that could help people. Uh, sounds like meeting face to face regularly, um, training your junior colleagues. Oh yes, oh, right. Yes, definitely helps enormously. You have several channels of communication open all, at all times, hangout chats, etc. Yeah. What about your knowledge base kind of technology? How do you capture and and find you know the problems that come up over and over again? Yeah, so, I mean, we, we do have our internal tools, which are constantly being developed by our, you know, tier twos mm -hmm. and other technicians on our side. That will help us, uh, you know, solve common issues, as well as, you know, at a certain point of the year, you will see a lot of issues around SSL and... At another point of the year, there are some well-known security releases or something like that. You know, that's the, that's the beauty is also if uh, a reoccurring issue happens, there's always somebody stepping in and writing some manual or doing a short training video on that. Yeah. So we're up to speed quite quickly. Yeah. Okay, so you're also kind of preparing documentation for each other. If you solve something, you're giving that back yeah. to the team. Yeah, definitely, definitely. If you see some reoccurring issue and you report it internally, uh, most of the times looked at and it's yeah, it so it returns quickly in the circle and and, and, teach, yeah. and teach each other again. I mean, All right. it, it may yeah. begin as a critical issue for a customer that leads to a support leadership escalation that then becomes a very long documentation on, you know, how are we solving this, mm -hmm. which goes to a support initiative to actually write something about it, going back to our Acquia documentations that then becomes customer facing. And at that point, you know, which might take a year or a week, depending on the issue, uh, the entire support crew or, you know, support team will probably know about this. Mm -hmm. And we will have both internal facing as well as external facing documentation on it. What are the three best things about working in Drupal support? Uh, working in open source, for, with open source within the community. Um, uh, second one for me would be uh, working with clients all over the world. That's also fun, I think. And yeah, being in such a great team that's also, that would be the three things I can think of. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I have the impression that it is also a real open source job when you get to help people get through their problems and explain how you fixed it and there's nothing hidden. It's completely transparent, yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. So it's really, really giving, it's really contributing to making, to making, to helping everyone succeed. With, with right. some of the customers I write out, I, I, I see your problem, I started with this, now I did, I did this, then I did that, then I did that, and this is how I solved it. And the customer is like, wow, man. next time you don't get a ticket of that kind yeah. from the customer again. And with a, I, exactly what you say, with a closed environment, you can't do that. No. You just send a bill and say, we fix it. And we're just helping the customers. <laughs> Another interesting yeah. thing, when these issues occur or, you know, a, a customer is filing a ticket, I'm using, let's say, Clam AV. I wanted to work in a special fashion. Mm -hmm. It's not really working out. We see this and that problem. We engage. We you know, we, we track down the issue at hand, we write some code, we can commit that as a patch, and it can become a part of the module on Drupal Lord. Thus, the, the, you know, the issue at hand, you know, the, the customer issue has become a solution that's now open for Right, so, so we're really, really giving that back. Yeah, we're really giving it back, you know, which is... 
That's pretty beautiful. <laughs> I, I think it's pretty I'm, beautiful. I'm feeling a little bit uh, moved, actually, honestly. Yeah. Uh, three top technical tricks for building great remote teams. Hangouts, I, I want to say. So audio-visual connection yeah, yeah. throughout the day. Yeah, it doesn't have to be throughout the day, but, you know, uh, coming from a Scrum background, you know, we, we did the, um, the stand-ups in the morning, you know, start off with something like that. Right. Start off it also it lets you be spontaneous, right? Yeah, totally. Like, it also lets you tell a joke. Yeah, totally. No, definitely. Totally. I mean, we never do that. <laughs> no, it never happens. We're very serious. I never put on the no. Thor soundtrack standing there posing with my sledgehammer. <laughs> no, 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 That has never happened. Uh, so that's one. Hangouts. Sure. Yeah, hangouts. Uh, one thing that's, that I find pretty awesome, that my wife might find not as awesome, is our WhatsApp group. The very informal, non-work related, fun stuff group. Yes, you know, definitely. To see what someone might be up to at 3 a.m. on a Saturday morning or... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I've, I've noticed um, a pattern of successful teams like this <clears throat> actually define ways to uh, ways times forums for not talking about work but talking about all so, the stuff that you would talk about if you were in the same space oh yeah so we've got hangouts we've got the um the secret back channel for the funny stuff oh, yeah. what would be your third you know tip for success yeah. well meeting quite regularly uh, even in real life yeah in, yeah, yeah, in real huge. life and along with that comes you know substances in liquid form pubs right food so you know bonding also, yeah the, the fundamental and that, build, fun. that builds trust yeah definitely. for me it does you know I'm not saying that you have to and start to learn each other uh, learn yeah learn each other on a personal level also that yeah, you yeah. are aware of one. Get to know each other. Yeah, get to know each other. Right. It's not yeah. somebody colleague far, far away. Hank knows. has his dogs. Daniel has yeah, his, has his yeah. kids. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. somebody. I'm working here. My colleague is working there. What I've encountered in a real office life. And I didn't know anything about the sales guy or the dude on the other hand. Huh. And now you're working far, far away. You know. Yeah. You have to rely on each other all day long. Totally. totally. And I mean, uh, then there's another thing on the internet that I believe I know both of you in that channel on the Facebook, uh, you can trash talk Facebook if you want to, but I, I love it. I love posting pics of my kids. I love posting pics of the princess party that I went to with my daughter the day after a your, Drupal event. Your Facebook feed is pretty hot. Yeah. What Pancakes, yeah. pajamas, <laughs> princess parties. Oh yes, oh yes, <laughs> you know, frozen. But, um, also seeing what our folks are up to, you know, this combined, all of this combined, uh, when meeting someone in a hangout in the morning, you tend to know what kind of mode that person is in. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I see those puffy eyes? Did this person go to the restaurant with his wife yesterday? Mm, might there have been a few too many beers? Or, <laughs> no, 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 or no, you know, no, no. do I look tired? Yes. Why do I look tired? You know, did we suffer a smaller plague in our house from the kids? Yeah, maybe, and so forth, you know. It's, uh, it's very important. Things that you would notice if you met someone in the office right. daily. Uh, it's very important. Hey, so um, thanks for sharing all this information. And, and, you know, thank you, honestly, thank you for helping so many people succeed with Drupal and giving as much of that back as you do. It's, it's really, really great. So, and thanks for taking the time Thank you very to much. talk with me well, today. Um, I know I was stealing a tiny bit of your pub time now. I really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, no, we were heading into we're a session. We'll, <laughs> <laughs> we'll edit at the end again. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Yeah. So in Drupal 7, Hank, mm -hmm. what's your favorite module? Yeah, views. Simple. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Do you have a more interesting answer? No. No. Ah! Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I don't. No. <laughs>